T minus two minutes. This is the EDB launch of the Telesto space tug aboard the Saturn 9A rocket. The last launch of the Saturn 9A was on July 3rd. That was two months ago with the launch of the L1 truss to Titan station. Uh, since then, the EDB has been focused on the Saturn C3X missions, much larger missions and more costly missions. But the Saturn 9 is still the go to rocket for low Earth orbit payloads between 5 and 20 tons, and that fits the Telesto space tug, which is in the lower half of that range at about 11 tons, as we are T minus 1 minute and 20 seconds. Kerosene, liquid oxygen, and liquid hydrogen are all loaded and pressurized. Everything is a go for launch. The Telesto will need to rendezvous with Titan Station, so there is a launch window. The Saturn 9 and Saturn 9A have been responsible for most of the station building missions, so there's no concern about the rocket's ability to bring its payload to the intended destination. T minus 45 seconds. Well, they're behaving fine at the Cape here, and we have had no undue delays. Everything proceeding quite quickly. Lots of activity for the EDB this week as we approach T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20, T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, ignition sequence start, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff. We have liftoff of the Saturn 9A rocket with the Telesto space tug to Titan Station. Rocket has cleared the tower. T plus 30 seconds, rocket is 1,579 meters in altitude, 112 meters per second in speed. Accelerating quite quickly as this is a relatively light payload for the rocket. And we see a roll program completing. T plus 50 seconds, 4,700 meters altitude, 227 meters per second. The rocket has passed Mach 1. 63 seconds in, 8,280 meters altitude, 324 meters per second in ground speed, 1.5 kilometers down range. We have some aberrant pitch, pitch commands, but uh, the rocket seems to be correcting fine as the, as the trajectory is good, continues to be good. 90 seconds in, 19,900 meters in altitude, 638 meters per second in speed, 6.2 kilometers downrange. The rocket has passed the area of max Q, maximum dynamic pressure, and is continuing on its way successfully. There's some concern in mission control about some of the sharp pitch changes that we've seen, and we'll have more about that later. Two minutes and five seconds into launch, 47 kilometers in altitude, 1,342 meters per second in speed, 28 kilometers down range. And we're preparing for first stage engine out in about 10 seconds here. We have main engine cut out. First stage separation is good, and the second stage is lit, continuing on its way, the J2 bringing the, the Telesto space tug to orbit, and the trajectory looks good despite some of the rapid pitch, pitch changes that we've seen. So the comments here are that the, the, the basic sentiment about the Saturn 9 before this was 
that it was a reliable system and there was high degree of confidence in its uh, ability to bring the Telesa space tug into orbit and uh, and compared to the Saturn C3X it is a relatively simple system and uh, perhaps the talk here as we see uh, should see payload fairings, ah there we go, uh, payload fairing separation occurred three minutes into the launch and the talk is perhaps they need to take steps to avoid complacency in preparations for rocket launches and perhaps there was uh, some issue with the fact that the Telesto space tug is uh, fairly light compared to the maximum payload for this rocket and if it was not balanced properly for some reason that might lead to the severe oscillations that we've been seeing. There is a uh, camera on the on the fairing base but there is no camera on the payload itself so we're seeing the uh, fairing base camera as we pass the three minutes uh, excuse me, four minute mark, four minute mark, two plus four minutes, 152 kilometers now to 2,447 meters per second, 277 kilometers down range. Rocket proceeding quite well, and I suppose uh, now would be a good time to talk about the payload. The Telesto Space Tug is a $29 million project for the space station, uh, funded by a joint venture between various space agencies and the goal is simply to have a tug that can bring payloads that are near to the station outside its uh, two kilometer range into the space station and dock them up properly and thus negating the need to put RCS on the payloads themselves uh, so no RCS fuel or RCS thrusters on the payloads themselves and using the space tug for all of that as we our past five minutes, T plus five minutes, 185 kilometers in altitude, 2,929 meters per second in speed, 467 kilometers down range. The space tug has uh, many more capabilities than that though. First of all, at the front is an advanced grabbing unit. So not only can it bring payloads uh, into dock, but it can grab any sort of debris and either protect the station or also deorbit debris, uh, recovering uh, with its own thrusters to prevent itself from also deorbiting. Uh, it has a life support container, so if uh, some wayward uh, manned mission were to go awry, uh, it could head out to that mission and uh, it has life support on board for one Kerbal for 80 days or two Kerbals for 40 days and so forth. And so it would be able to support them and then bring them back to station. Uh, aside from that, it has many other capabilities. As we get the eight minute, uh, six minute mark, sorry, six minute mark, 202 kilometers in altitude, 3,398 meters per second, 634 kilometers downrange. Um, it has the capability of using a radio winch. For the first time, the EDB is deploying a radio winch from KAS Manufacturing and that will add capabilities that we have not seen before though uh, the EDB is reluctant to specify exactly what they intend to do with that uh, but it has that it has uh, communications arrays that would allow it to communicate from the moon and that is uh, interesting because its total delta V is 5618 meters per second meaning that it can on its own transfer to the moon and also return it can transfer the moon, make moon orbit, and return. Of course, that's without payload. With payload, it would be uh, severely strapped. However, it is using MMH N204, so it could dock with the existing Paliac fuel depot and retrieve fuel from the fuel depot and then make a return with an extra load or deliver a load to lunar orbit and then return using the fuel from the fuel depot. So all these are possibilities, though the payload would in any case uh, have to be fairly light if it's transferring to the moon. Also, it would have to make its burns progressively, it would have to make multiple burns in order to reach the moon because its thrusters are only one kilonewton thrusters, four of them from EADS Astrium, and those thrusters uh, provide a thrust to weight ratio of 0.04 to 0.22 depending how much fuel is left in the tank, and that is not much. 
uh, T plus 7 minutes and 50 seconds. We're at 227 kilometers in altitude, 4,846 meters per second in velocity, and 1,163 kilometers downrange. So it would have to uh, burn multiple times to boost its orbit to uh, lunar injection. Its stage time is two hours, and so that gives you an idea how long it would take it to transfer to the moon. So it's unlikely that it will be used for that uh, purpose. It does have all this delta V because it might be moving very heavy payloads uh, up to and including 100 tons into dock. So in that case, it needed the extra delta V. As we see here, the rocket at 8 minutes and 40 seconds after launch, 241 kilometers in altitude, 5,850 meters per second in speed, 1,458 kilometers downrange. The Telesto space tug is powered with uh, many uh, small solar panels that surround its uh, main tank. However, it also has RTGs, uh, PB, NUK, radioisotope, ther isotope thermoelectric generators from ionic protonic electronics. And so it has that as backup power. In fact, the entire space tug system is meant to be emergency contingencies of all kinds. So it is prepared for winching, it is prepared for grappling, it has docking ports, three docking ports, a 1.25 meter, a 2 meter, and a 2.5 meter docking port. And so it is fully featured. It has its RCS ports, obviously, thrusters, and so forth. The one thing it cannot do is make acceleration particularly quickly as we are getting ready for a second stage out, and there it is. Uh, the second stage is out, and we are waiting for orbital information here. The second stage went out 9 minutes and 45 seconds after launch and the orbit is 521 kilometers apoapsis, 202 kilometers periapsis, that is approximately uh, just under the orbit of the space station. The second stage will remain with the space tug as it has two more relights and can help the space tug uh, get to the station without using the space tug's own fuel, which would be helpful because we don't want to have to refuel it right away. Uh, the craft is currently at 253 kilometers in altitude and it is 2,000 kilometers downrange. There is 1,587 meters per second of delta V left in the second stage, the J2 stage, and it has other rockets capable for two relights. The relative inclination to Titan Station is 2.63 degrees, and so one of the things that the second stage will have to do is correct that inclination before the space tug can be left to its own devices to get to dock. So there you have it, the launch of the Telesto space tug, a modern Saturn 9A rocket, and we will see how this works out in uh, future, future broadcasts as we will cover the Telesto space tug coming into dock at Titan Station. We hope you will join us for that. We hope you enjoyed this coverage of the launch. And with that, this is the EDB signing off.